Leafs Senior Pickleball Report is brought to you by TNC Network. Get ready for an exciting episode of People of Pickleball with Mike Sleva. We're about to dive deep into conversations with influential figures from the world of pickleball. So let's get it going. Okay, today we have an interview with Kevin Perkins from Crown Pickleball, talking about how balls are actually made and some of the choices manufacturers have to make and all types of fun stuff. But before we get to that, check out all the links in the description for discounts and shoes and paddles. Check out and subscribe to our newsletter. Subscribe to the channel and help us out. Uh, Like, comment, all of the above. And um, go to our merch page. We have some pretty cool stuff coming out. And of course, hey, check out this. Pickle Bros, man, sent me this and another one which I'll wear you know, in a short time, link in the description. And of course, Santa Barbara happy for the hat as well. Link in the description. All right, let's get to that interview with Kevin. Okay. Kevin Perkins from Crown Pickleball. Welcome to the senior pickleball report, brother. Hey, Sleeves, it's awesome that you're having me. I really appreciate it. Brother, it's really, we've been talking about doing this for such a long time, and <laughs> I finally got all my orders caught up. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! So that's a good thing. Obviously, um, and we'll get to that, you know, things obviously are happening pretty quick for you. You jumped in the game, you made a big splash right away. But let's get started with, you know, it's one thing, obviously, to, to, to kind of uh, start the business, but you have to get into the sport first on some level. So really what brought you into pickleball? Yeah. So around here, so I live in San Clemente where they have the, the PPA championships, you know, uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it an epicenter, but it's pretty close, you know, whatever. Uh, right. anyway, we, we, um, my wife and I were talking one day and she was looking online for stuff to do kind of post pandemic right around 2021, you know, and she's yeah. like, hey, we should do a pickleball class together. And I was like, pickleball, that sounds lame. The name's lame. <laughs> Everything's lame, 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 lame. And she's like, come on, it'd be fun. It'd be like a date night. And I was like, okay, you know, trying to be a little more intentional with all that. And so I was like, let's sure. go. Let's, let's do it. Let's, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really sweet. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun, actually. And then I started playing and I was hooked, bro. It was just like done and done, man. It was like gigantic ping pong. I was like, that's that's my jam. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, it seems to be that seems to be the common story. As soon as people step on the court, obviously, um, most of the time it hooks them. But as I've said to other people who have got into the, you know, the business end of pickleball, it's one thing to play it. It's another thing to, you know, invest in the sport and, you know, blood, sweat and tears in the whole bit and, you know, start developing products um, and, and things like that. So talk about that. Yeah, that journey, man, <laughs> because you went from date night to running a business. <laughs> How did that happen? Okay. So, so clowning around aside, um, you know, I just, uh, to give you a little bit of background. So being by the beach, you know, I grew up, I actually grew up here in San Clemente. So I grew up surfing was a lifeguard for eight summers, um, up and through the pandemic up until 2021, actually, I was, you know, swimming up like through, you know, anywhere from 1500 to 3000 yards a day kind of a thing. And just very much a water person. And then when I got into this, I started, you know, doing the one, one night a week thing with the class and then was like, well, let's meet up on Saturday, Sunday with some friends. And then it became social and it was like fun, you know, it was like a whole different kind of level of, 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 of to it. And, um, and then it just started getting more and more frequent. I started getting better. I was, uh, I, I did the, um, my first PPA here in town, you know, about a year, two years, about a, yeah, about two years ago. And, uh, so I started practicing. So then I got more equipment and then it was just like this, you know, thing. Right. And so, um, I felt compelled to, uh, give back to this sport, especially when I lost like 40 pounds doing it. Uh, I met a ton of really fun and cool people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting uh, total knee replacements. My first one starting wow. in January. 
uh, and the next one in April. I mean, I'm, I'm like all in on pickleball. I mean, it's like, yeah. I'm legit having the time of my life doing it. So, um, I kind of don't see, you know, going back to the water lifestyle as much and really just kind of having fun with, you know, just on a personal level, having super fun with uh, the whole pickleball scene. It's a lot of fun. So, so fun. And at my yeah. age, I am 52. Uh, I know this is the senior pickleball report. I might be a youngster, maybe to some, but yeah. uh, you know, it makes 50 me feel plus, brother, 50 plus. It makes me feel a lot younger as a person. You know, I, I just, you know, I think maybe that's, we can talk a little bit about that too, but I think pickleball kind of brings, brings it out in you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So why balls? Like what, what, what drove you to kind of go like, you know, I'm going to get into to designing and uh, you know, retailing balls. Yeah. So, so I was, um, you know, for the last, I don't know, year or so as I, you know, I started to improve or whatever, I, you know, I start, you start to pay attention to the gear, right? So paddles, right. balls, et cetera. And I just was kind of, not, you know, disheartened by some of the equipment and, and yeah. namely the balls, right? So like the, the Duros would crack a lot or the, the Franklins were really super mushy in my opinion. Um, yeah. and again, I, I'm not here to, you know, disparage anybody else's brand. If you like a certain thing or you like a certain ball and you're hot to trot by all means that the market is as big as it's going to, you know, it's going to be a huge market. So there's lots of room for everybody. But yeah. that, that being said, um, you know, I, I was looking at, you know, I watched this, uh, I watched one of the, uh, other podcasts out there. I think it was the dink or something like that. And they had a, yeah. A uh, private equity guy talking about the business of pickleball. And, right. you know, I've been doing entrepreneurial stuff for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, I've been a tech person by trade. So I built a lot of software and sold software and things like that. And I was like, you know, it'd be kind of fun to do a little side hustle, you know, in pickleball. I like yeah. it. I like it. And uh, so bottom line is I just started looking into all the different areas, you know, is it, was it going to be, you know, uh, kind of the pickleball kingdom model where you get like a concrete tilt up and you turn it into an indoor, you know, dreamland kind yeah. of a situation, or was it going to be the paddles or was it going to be, uh, tournaments and running, you know, a, a nationalized like tournament system or something like that or whatever. Right. And so it kind of looked and examined all the different business models. And I, you know, I, I saw balls as being kind of a, a scalable and repeatable business with a lot of upside opportunity, especially in the formulation of these balls. So absolutely. And it seems to me you've done a pretty smart thing. You've really sort of partnered with some people to get your balls out there with, you know, like somebody's paddle, for example. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about doing that and, you know, your, your thoughts behind that. Yeah. I mean, so, so when I mentioned the whole social aspect of this and you know, one of the biggest gifts thus far has been to, to create all these relationships with people by not being the, the, the big pickle kind of a model where yeah. you're trying to, to crush and kill everybody. My model has been to embrace as many people as possible and, and to really kind of in, envelop what p other people are doing in the, in the business and in the sport. So for instance, like, uh, we have a, a number of local paddle companies, um, forehand paddles, uh, five shot, et cetera. And so whether or not we would work something out or I would just buy their paddles, I just, you know, started doing this, um, this, uh, free giveaway where people were doing, um, you know, I'd give away three packs, you know, if they had bought one of their paddles. So it was win, 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 right. Um, you know, encouraging the P you know, the use of local, you know, paddle companies, um, you know, three pack for me is really not that much to give away, but then again, that my cost of acquisition is super small. So relatively speaking, so, uh, and then, you know, just developing into some really cool friendships, namely, um, you know, you, Gregory storm, you know, from raw, yeah. he was well, on your yeah, podcast. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he and I have really kind of hit it off. And then, and in fact, we're talking about maybe doing our own podcast at some point here in the, now in the we're coming. Talking. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, crowning raw or something like that. I don't know. We haven't really yeah, figured out the name I yet, love it. <laughs> but, uh, we're definitely, uh, definitely going to be talking more about, you know, kind of this aspect of community as opposed to like PPA and MLP synopsis, yeah. like nobody's, nobody kind of cares. Like after a certain point, like that stuff's kind of boring to me. So yeah, uh, yeah we, it's too much drama, too much drama and too much, you know, frankly, mismanagement. I mean, I don't know what they're yeah, doing yeah, to be honest with but, um, what we're going to do it and have fun with it. We might do some men on the streets, talk to actually people who are playing, you know, do some fun stuff it. like that. So 
so anyway, yeah. So Greg and I and Raw, I mean, definitely are are, are moving forward together um, on a lot of stuff. And uh, you know, I might even do my own paddle. You know, I've, I've been kind of experimenting with some uh, some stuff. I'm not sure if I'm gonna try to like attack the the, the high end pro. Like, hey, if you buy my paddle, you're now gonna be Ben Johns. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you got the voice for it. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I feel like, I feel like, you know, there's a kind of a, um, if, if you looked at the market as being kind of like this, this triangle, right. Uh, yeah. And up here is the professionals. And then you've got your kind of, you know, mid tier of like three to five O's. And then you got your beginner market. The pyramid's actually like this, like there's right. such a small, small amount of emphasis on, on the pro ecosystem to me, I don't understand the marketing around, Hey, if you, if you use our ball, if you use our paddle, if you use this, you're now going to be, you know, on your way to becoming a pro. That's just a, that's a selling, you know, snake oil as far as that goes. Um, so, so for me, I'm more about the value in it. Like if I can generate a cool product, like a ball or a paddle and you don't have to lose your arms and legs to pay for it. And you want to keep coming back and be part of my community and what we're doing. Shoot. I love, I, you know, I don't have to boil the ocean in, in one sale. Let's work together on this indefinitely. Let's, let's be partners, customer business partners, you know, forever. Yeah. And I love that approach because, you know, the more people I talk to who are getting into the entrepreneurial and the pickleball, um, it seems to be a common theme that like, you know, all ships will rise. We're trying to do the, the same thing. You know, not everybody's got to make a jillion dollars. You know, we're we're doing this because one, we love it. And two, it's fun. And uh, totally. if something comes from it. Um, you know, that's just a, a, another bonus. But, um, you know, I love your attitude because it seems to me, uh, at least I'm drawn to the the companies and the brands that are creating a culture. And I feel like that's what you're doing um, in, in with the balls and your partnerships. That, that's because I, lo- I love Gregory for the same way. Yeah. Um, and, and some other companies that are doing that as well. And those are the ones that, for me, stick out because at the end of the day, they've created an experience for me that I enjoy. And I enjoy, mm-hmm. re- you know, getting to repeat that experience by interacting and, um, you know, purchasing their, their items, using their items, whatever it happens yeah. to be. Um, it, it's fun. It's, it's exciting. There's always um, something new coming along and they're not just about trying to sell paddles and balls. Um, they're doing some yeah. things that, that makes their day, you know, sort of fun. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, Greg, Greg does, uh, some cool stuff for the, the, the honeybee farmers with uh, right. his paddles. Um, I did this F cancer ball. So even though it's right. a little bit more on the premium side, Yep. Even though it's more on the premium side, what I'm doing is, you know, any of the profits that I make from this, the proceeds go to cancer curing stuff. My mom yeah. uh, passed away from it, you know, 2001. So like almost 22 years ago. And I, you know, I still think about her and stuff. It was actually sure. the, the anniversary of her death just the other day. And so anyway, as I was just like, you know, my, what, what little part I can do too. So it's not just about like, like, a, like, you know, I hate to bring up big pickle, but there's some companies out there that are charging 250 bucks for these paddles. And you're just like, um, you got the paddle made in the same spot that this guy did. And that guy, like did, six and that guy did. And they're all like around a hundred bucks, 120 bucks. Yeah. You're yeah. Twice it's as like much? anything else. You know, I, I play, I play an instrument. I play bass guitar, but you know, my guitar has so many more features than for example, like a Fender, but you know, it's not a Fender. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's, you know, you are paying for that name and people, People go out there. I had a guy tell me the other day who who is an influencer. He goes, "Boy, you review a lot of paddles I've never heard of." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, besides the big five or whatever what you want to count, there's like 495 others yeah. that are making really good products at really affordable prices and doing some really cool things that these yeah. companies are not doing." Sleeves here, senior pickleball report, powered by TNC Network. Just finishing up a practice session, the world's worst pickleball courts, and been playing with these bad boys for a while crown pickleball link in the description check these out great ball um, i haven't cracked any yet and of course you know i'm an old man but really cool ball um coming pink in this color they got outdoor indoor and i think they're gonna be a major player in pickleballs because you know um people are starting to kind of you know gravitate towards this ball i know uh, the podcast king of the court they love them 
Um, I love them. People talking about them. People giving them away with their paddles because they know it's a reliable, solid ball. So check out Crown Pickleball. New player in town, and man, they came out with a bang. So love it. All right, folks. Hey, at the end of the day, let's pickle. Are you looking to stay up to date on the latest pickleball news and tips? Look no further than the Sleeve Senior Pickleball Report newsletter. Get the scoop on the sport, learn how to stay healthy while playing, and find out about upcoming tournaments. Subscribe now to get all the pickleball info you need. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm like, yeah. I, I've well, always you know, kind of been gravitating towards people who are just coming on the scene and um, you know getting them some exposure because you know, they don't, you know, otherwise they just see you, like you said, you know, they see the Dura, the Franklin paddles, they see Selkirk, they see Yola and a couple others. And then they think that's the game. Uh, but there's so much cool stuff out there. There is. And you know, it's funny, you mentioned Fender. Uh, do you, you've heard of a company called line six? Yes. Yeah. I think they're here in Irvine, not that far yeah. away from here. And, uh, yeah, that's such a cool technology. You basically just like plug it into whatever guitar could be the biggest POS that there is and hit, hit the, hit the, uh, Eddie Van Halen button and it will sound, you know, just like Eddie Van Halen. It's pretty rad. It's like, yeah, those things change the game for sure. (laughs) For sure. And it's like, you know, yeah, it's not a Fender. It doesn't whatever, or Strat, you know, some Stratocaster type thing or whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, I feel like, for me, like balls are kind of similar. So, you know, if, if we weren't going to talk balls real quickly. Yeah, let's talk about that. You know, balls, balls are, this is a piece of plastic. Okay. There's no piece of plastic that's going to work uh, indefinitely. It will crack eventually. It will get fuzzy, especially with carbon faced paddles. Right. But there are some nuances, right? Like you can make this thing super hard and it will fly incredibly fast, but it'll break, especially in cold temperatures. Um, and it will, and it will scare a lot of people who aren't very good at the kitchen line, right? right. Because it is so dang hard the, on the flip side of the coin is you've got these really soft, you know, balls, uh, and they, you know, get really mushy when it's hot out. They tend to be super forgiving. Like one of the funniest things I, I get is people saying, Oh, I don't like your balls. I want a refund or I want a replacement, which by the way, we have a completely hundred percent satisfaction guarantee with all of our stuff. You're not happy with our stuff. Yeah. Let us, let us help you out. Let's figure it out. I don't want to be your vibe killer. That's our promise, but I digress. So, so these people are playing these, these, this brand that's been around probably the longest it's super mushy. And uh, it, it, uh, after it gets worn, it really, um, it doesn't break, but it really um, uh, compresses when you hit it, right? So these people get used to it, and they start hitting these forehands that are just like, <laughs> I just, I just yeah, I hit a winner. I'm so amazing. And then they play the crown ball, yeah. which doesn't uh, – it picks up on literally your face angle, the type of grit that you have, and all that yeah. stuff. And when they go, boom, and it goes, or, or whatever, and they're like, your ball is wobbling. I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. Your ball is wobbling, sure. So it's like, no, yeah. you're just so sloppy in your play because you haven't paid attention, because you haven't changed your ball out in six months. Like, yeah. it's just a bush. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so if, it's a, if it's a continuum, Dura's the hard end of the spectrum, let's say, and the uh, Franklin might be at the very uh, softer end of the uh, the scale. Um, yeah. And there's some ones that are on the either side of those two. Um, Crown is kind of more towards Dura, so it's okay. not quite as hard as Dura, so yeah. that it will have a little bit more uh, longevity, durability. But at the same time, it also picks up on stuff like spin, uh, face angle. Uh, grit a lot better and we make it brighter too so you can see it that's like one of the biggest selling points that i've seen lately is that people just love the color they can see it and they have a great time especially when they're paying 8.99 for a three pack like we kill everybody on price points so again i just go back to this notion of value and like what i want to give to the community and hopefully people will see that and give it back absolutely and uh so talk a little bit about like the, the choices you've made um, for the the ball that have allowed you to kind of fall into that area where you're just sort of behind Dura and, you know, it's not as mushy, obviously, or lopsided as maybe a Franklin ball will be. What 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 is it? I'm assuming you're looking at material and going, okay, um, what am I going to mm-hmm. pick here? 
Yeah. So, so it's definitely like a recipe, if you will, you know, to all the yeah. different plastics and things like that. And, um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a, I'm a scientist or a chemist or anything like that, yeah. but I can't, but I can tell you like what I like and what I don't like. Right. And, um, down here at the club, there's, there's a lot, like I said, there's lots of pad- paddle and, and there's also an evolved manufacturer also that, yeah. uh, that, that got a start about two years ago and, uh, they had some initial success, but their ball, uh, kind of was one of those balls that was so hard that it would crack a lot. And, and yeah. people complain. And so they made some adjustments and they or have a second model or whatever. And, uh, you know, similarly, like we just did the same thing. Like we start sort of started with what we thought would be like the best thing. And then as I, you know, would get like a small sample set and just give them out to all my friends and say, play it. Let me tell, you know, give us that yeah. feedback. Yeah. And, you know, we would, they would say, oh, it bounces too much. So I'm thinking, okay, hard, uh, oh, so Dura, you know, like that yeah. range, right? Oh, uh, it cracked. Um, well, how cold was it out? Oh, it was 45 degrees. Okay. Well, that, that may or may not be the, the plastic, but, or just right. bad choices. Um, but anyways, uh, that being said, you know, just all that, cu- you know, customer, potential customer feedback, player feedback. Uh, helped us to get to kind of where we're at. And so that's where we've landed. Um, right now we're kind of just going with that one skew. I mean, it's, it really is kind of a, a broad base uh, temperature wise, uh, material wise, all that stuff. It's just, it's really just a nice overall ball and, you know, it'll, yeah. it'll degrade eventually. We're not, sure, that, you know, that it's going to be perfect. Yeah. It's plastic. But um, what else? Oh, the other thing is, uh, yeah, we started, you know, we started with the outdoor ball. Uh, we also, you know, did a version of the, of the outdoor ball in pink. And then now we're, yeah, now we're doing the indoor ball. So the right. indoor ball is a little bit, so in, in the parlances of, of indoor plastic, um, yeah. we're definitely more on the harder side. And there's really no reason why, you know, balls can't be hard, like an outdoor ball or whatever, right. other than, People, you know, in the past have said, oh, it might scratch like a, you know, like a basketball hard floor or something like that or whatever. For us, we're, we're, you know, there's some brands like Gamma, uh, Jugs, some of the other indoors that are a lot more, a lot more softer and a lot more mushy. Right. So that when you're hitting them again, it's very forgiving. And so, you know, if you have a tendency to kind of like, not have a lot of control, you're, you're going to get a better result with the softer balls. Right. Right. But this ball, like I played it yesterday at the, our boys and girls club, it, it's indoor. Yeah. And, uh, it, it was really remarkable to go from like an, like a Franklin to this and <laughs> have it just really super responsive and to have, you know, you know, fire yeah. fights with an indoor ball or sometimes sort of like a, a slow volley, you know, right. Like, this is actually like a, a real firefight, you know, so yeah, you can't squeeze this thing. Like most indoor balls I can dent and I got to really push to get any sort of. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, so that's, so that's this one. It's a little bit darker of a green. It's not as yellow. We are yeah. uh, looking at some other colors that we're going to release here pretty soon. Uh, an orange, a bright yellow and a pink or like a reddish pink, um, getting some feedback that these, some of these colors are a little harder to see indoors. So, uh, we got some of that coming out. Um, yeah, we'll just, you know, Oh, and the, yeah, we're also going to do probably something, uh, at least test it out is uh, that new led ball for, for like stuff like that. Um, it's more like a, like a training ball, like one of those, you know, beginner balls that you get in like the the starter kits or whatever, but uh, it has like a little thing that you screw in and and it turns on and you can play like, I don't know, uh, 50 or so games with it and or before the battery goes out or something like that. Anyway, we're going to have some fun. Yeah. So just to have some fun, we'll just see if that's going to be something we want to put into our portfolio. But uh, yeah, we were, we're, um, we're doing a lot of stuff too. I mean, like beyond balls, you know, uh, we're, we're looking at, you know, paddles. We're looking at yeah. uh, some, some uh, training nets. So there's been some feedback that, you know, when you're at a tournament or like if you're in your garage or something, you don't really need a gigantic net. You just need a right. very compact net. So we're looking at some of that, some of those like, like personal type gear type things. You're not, uh, yeah. not really interested in doing a lot of apparel at this point, but um we are going to be doing a uh, uh, 
Uh, so, so being a tech guy, um, the last thing here is, is, uh, we're doing a, we're going to be doing a, a scoring app on the, the Apple watch. Oh, very nice. So yeah. basically it's, uh, it's super easy to take score. So there'll be no more like, Hey, what's the score? That's not the score. A hundred percent. And basically as you go and the game finishes, it records it to your iPhone so you can go back and see what all your scores were on any given day. So that's kind of the initial app. We probably will expand it uh, at some point and maybe tie into Duper or some other, you know, uh, right. things like maybe some uh, scheduling apps. We haven't really decided yet what, what's going to happen with yeah. that. But So Crown's really, I mean, 2024 sounds like a pretty big year, obviously. Growing, expanding, trying new things, becoming a, you know, a pretty rounded company with different, di- different avenues. So as we, uh, as we hedge and get you out of here, um, I guess, what are you looking forward the most uh, for the upcoming year? Uh, in terms of crown, I'm really looking forward to just keep, you know, keep that sort of steady growth. Uh, we're not really above. I wouldn't say we're still not above the radar yet. Like some of these brands, even though I've seen where our balls are kind of like in the top, maybe three to five, you know, conversation right now, easily, you know, um, as far as comparatives and and reference points, when they're talking about other balls, crowns usually in that, in that discussion. Um, so, so yeah, there's going to be some changes. Like we're, we're making some adjustments in our marketing. Um, we've got, um, you know, a lot of good feedback from folks. So I think what we want to do is just keep, keep, you know, uh, filling into the community and, and have them fill back into us and yeah, and, re- and really kind of have like a bottom up approach as opposed to like some of the big pickle where it's top down and this is what we're giving you kind of a thing. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and just go from there, just really try to have as much fun as possible. Cause this, is, this sport is, is it's a wiffle ball fun. game, man. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, listen, what's that dumb sticker you see on people's um, bumpers that says like, the worst, the worst day fishing is better than the best day working or something. Right. They get right. one that says the, the worst pickle day is better than the best day working. It's, it's the best sport ever. Honestly, it is. It is. And the people, the people make it, the community makes it. And, um, obviously the connections you and I have both made doing, um, you know, similar things in a lot of ways, but, uh, uh different as well. So I appreciate your time, Kevin. Um, I haven't, I've reviewed the balls. There's a link below in the description so you can watch the review. Um, all his ways to connect with Kevin are down below and, you know, go out there and support a really cool company, really cool dude. And he's making connections with other companies that are doing fabulous things. So appreciate your time and, um, maybe we catch up, uh, end of 2024, see what's happening with you. Oh man. I'd love to, I'd love to play a game or two or three or 10 with you, man. That'd be good. Yeah, I get out to OB once in a while because my uh, cousin lives out there. So uh, nice. probably this spring, uh, we'll hook up. I love it. Let's let's do it. Hope you enjoyed our time with Kevin Perkins from Crown Pickleball. Go and check out these balls. Indoor, outdoor, different colors. Great ball. Love it. Check out their stuff. And they're getting to everything else in pickleball. So I'm looking forward to see what Crown does in the future. All right, folks. Hey, at the end of the day, let's pickle.